Hey folks, this is Dico here, and welcome back to the council. So when last we left off, I had decided to do a bit of breaking and entering. We let ourselves into Napoleon's room and poked around his stuff. The interesting thing that I found is that he is apparently here to gain some kind of support from Mortimer in order to support a political play here, so that should be interesting to find out. Also, he has way better art. It's all like military victories and not... I don't know how to even categorize the insanity that we have in our room, so I'm a little jealous, but in any case, I guess we can go ahead and head down to the salon on the first floor now. Okay, no one seems to have noticed. You know, are any of these other rooms accessible to me? Because I would keep doing some breaking and entering. What did I just found? A half circle shaped key. That's interesting. Okay. See? It always pays to poke around at stuff. And what do we have here? Quorum guide. Rules of civility and decent behavior, you say? Huh, a treatise on good manners. Intended for the Jesuits. Good manners indeed. Yeah, let's keep looking around. Because, yeah, I will totally go poke through people's stuff at any point. Oh, here we go. Uh, some more Devil's Thorns. So this is the stuff that reveals strengths and um, immunities. Like, per conversation. So that could be useful. I don't know who all these rooms belong to, but... Or I should know, rather. That guy we haven't met yet. I'm not even sure who that is. Okay, anything else up here? Besides lots of nice chairs? Much That's more... the door to Elizabeth's room. Ooh... Ooh, um... Do we... I don't know if I want to break in. She's very likely to be up here. Maybe we could knock? Or we'll just let ourselves in. For God's sakes, what happened in here? Uh... Oh, okay, it's just witchcraft. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm not going to walk into the middle of that pentagram, obviously. I mean, don't be ridiculous. Half circle? A chest with a half circle pattern. Bam! And what do we have here? Amber. Precious ambergris. And a note. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Oh, really? So I can analyze this, or I can analyze... Oh, I can do it either way. This one costs me a point, this one does not. The note suggests binding the feet and hands, then blocking the jaws using a piece of cloth to prevent the tongue from being sectioned. That looks like a method to control an epileptic fit. I wonder if Elizabeth is the one being treated for that illness. Interesting. Very interesting. So, she, so she's epileptic. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better. And, unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Mm. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you'll be able to put all of this behind you one day. Oh, so you're not any better. Well, uh, I guess we're just not able to make it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Alright. Again, only fools step into a pentagram. Okay. Should I just use some of this royal jelly? I don't know if, like, I'm going to have a way to get free points refilled or not. Wow, she is quite the apothecary here. Okay. Why does she have two beds, exactly? Maybe because this bed has art on top of it? That's at least a little weird. Okay. Maybe a little weird is underselling it. June 11th, 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer matter to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. Don't forget to tell me what present you want. Ha! Cute. So, Dad's a dick. And can't deal with a daughter being... A novel of the initiation of a young woman into a polite society. Oh, neat. So she's no good for psychology. Carmelite water. Ah, it's more Carmelite water. This is the stuff that, I have to look over here, next action is free. Which could indeed be very valuable. And what do we have? We have several things over here. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you. But they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day to be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with Father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. Weird. 30 November, 1791. My dear sister, the cancellation of our reunion hit me like a stab to the heart. Father told me it was for your well-being, but I can't help but blame him. He claims that your condition has worsened and that it could be dangerous for both of us if we met. If only I knew where you were, believe me, I'd be at your side. I haven't received any news from you in a long time. Please write. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. I hope you like the enclosed talisman. So what's the story here? So Dad is concerned about... Well... A daughter who's either into witchcraft or is an epileptic or something like that, like what, affecting his political career? Hmm. Very interesting. What did she do with these paintings? Huh. This is weird even by our standards, right? Okay. What is that? Oh, just flowers. Okay. <laughs> well, we don't have a reflection. Okay, well, this was a very odd stop. I'm glad we came in here. Yeah, this is totally legit. This is exactly the kind of thing that normal people do to their hotel rooms. Especially if they really don't want their deposit pack. All right. Anywhere else I can poke through? President George Washington. Oh, this would be rude. Dare I? Um... We've been considering him an ally. But I don't know if that's actually true. Sorry, I'm just taking a look over here quick. I don't know if that's actually true. I mean... 
again, being an American, I sort of have to look at him as a demigod in the same way that, you know, Heracles was to the ancient Greeks, but still, we don't really know anything about him. I'm gonna poke. Hello? Let no one disturb me, I'm busy. Too bad, we'll see him later. Oh, all right. Well, the point is we tried. Okay. Well, I'm glad we've done some breaking and entering. This has yielded many interesting bits of knowledge. But I think we're cashed out up here, so now, at long last, we can go ahead and go downstairs and get some food. I can't speak for this guy, but I'm really hungry. So, can't use this stairway either? Why not? Okay. And this is where we were stopped by the man with a broom was apparently so terrifying that we were unable to pass. And we can't go upstairs. Okay. Well, I think we just have to circle around, right? Because there's... Oh, it's probably the staircase up here. Okay. Yep, down we go. This is much nicer in daylight. Oh, hey! I was just looking at your Excuse stuff. Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. What up? Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault, too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, a tattoo. the only thing that I care about is Couple that I've lost something precious. I'm not worried about Jack Peru. Um, here, have your talisman. You didn't happen to lose this, did you? Where did you find it? In the small salon. In your room? Wait, no. It's the only reminder I have of my beloved sister. I thought that swine stole it from me. You're her son. Sarah de Richet's son. Yes. Why? Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What? What are you doing here? Um... I have a soft spot for crazy people. My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing. So I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. What? She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No, I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed and Ah. Uh. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Um... Hold on a minute. What do you mean? You can ask her when you see her. Huh. She's getting more and more agitated. Settle down. Okay. Look, I've... I've got to go. Wait. I, I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Um, let's allow her to confide. I'll use these points. Elizabeth, confide. Uh-oh. You just encountered an immunity. One effort point is locked. Oh, no, I knew that. Crap. Okay. Hiding in me might ease your burden. I knew that. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturer's son, I will be I healed that up. by magic? That it will bring my smile back or let me sleep at night? Look, you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Well, don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Um, her sister. Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Nice. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. 
Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. Yeah. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Uh -huh. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. That's not how that works. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very ah. day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Do I know her? Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Uh. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. Time to go. I can't believe I screwed that up. Feeling pretty confident about my mom's personality after finding out that there's this whole thing that's been going on. That makes me suspect that maybe I didn't necessarily know her as well as I thought I did. Because that's kind of weird. Should I remove this negative status effect? Sure. Hey there, dude. What can I do for you, sir? I am at your service day and night, sir. What can you tell me about Lord Mortimer? I would like to speak about your master. Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Very well. Is there anything else that sir would like to know? Actually, I'd like to know a little more about this manor, too. This place is pretty crazy. Let's see here. So I've been to the first floor. Yes. Can you briefly describe the ground floor, please? Very well, sir. On the ground floor, there are mainly living rooms. Sir finds himself that present in the Grand Hall. Okay. From the Grand Hall, Sir can access, on one side, the small salon where the guests like to relax with a good book. From there, Sir can access the conference room, which is closed at present for preparations. Mm -hmm. That is where Lord Mortimer likes to gather all of his guests for talks. From the other side of the Grand Hall, Sir may access the dining room. That is where Sir's meals will be served. Okay. From the dining room, Sir may benefit from an exceptional view overlooking the island. Ooh. It is also the best way to access the portrait gallery, where a large part of Lord Mortimer's works are exhibited. Interesting. And in the gallery, Sir will also find access to the garden. But Sir may be reassured, the building is accessible on both sides so that it surrounds the garden in question. Huh. So, Sir should not find cause to worry. No one has ever gotten lost. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, except for my mother. Has Sir uh, another question? Yeah, I actually would like to know about all the floors here, if you don't mind. What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, Sir. That is where Sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable Sir to return to the ground floor. It is also from there that Sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, Sir? Yeah, what's on the third floor? 
Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. Hmm. In the west wing on the second floor are his private chambers. In the east wing are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. And sneaky ones. Does sir have any more questions? Is it okay if I just wander around outside? What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. Ah. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. Mm -hmm. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, I would advise, sir, to pass through the portrait gallery. I'm interested in that May anyway. May I help, sir, in any other way? No, thank you. You've been very helpful. Oh, actually, wow, if I can keep asking questions. So what can you tell me about our guests today? What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir. But I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's that makes sense. guests, sir. Perhaps sir uh, would like to know something else? That's okay. That's totally legitimate. How could I have him help me out with As what? As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Ooh. Of course, sir. What would you require? Oh, hello. Um... What is it that I want? Oh, these are interesting. A manuscript. So, we've already found consumables around? I'm curious about what a manuscript might be. What's that book you're hiding in your jacket? The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe, sir. And I am not hiding it. Ah, hand it to me, please. It is damaged, sir. I would never dare lend sir a book in such a pitiful state, sir. I took it to restore. Okay. No, that's... Well... No, I want the book. Hang on, but it's mine. Beg pardon, sir? It's my book. I'm telling you, it's my book. With all due respect, sir, I hope sir will understand that I have doubts. You see, <laughs> I found it in Lord Mortimer's library. Well, there you are then. That's exactly where I left it. I am quite put out, sir. I don't know what to say. In that case, I suggest you say nothing and hand it over. But Ooh. I... Now. But, sir, I... Very well, sir. Here you are. May sir take good care of it. It is damaged. I'll be and careful. you damaged it as well? Well, bravo. Dude. Bravo. No, no, I didn't do anything. Dude. It wasn't me, sir. Say pardon. Pardon me, sir. Very good. There were some other things wow. I wanted to go over with you. That's... Wow. Okay. Um, let me see here. So I do have room for Devil's Thorn. That seems like that'll be an interesting one. I still haven't quite recovered after the boat crossing. Would you have any Maltese cross by any chance, please? I... I am sorry, sir, but the Maltese cross may be just a plant, but it is also a powerful psychotropic drug that causes undesirable diuretic effects. <laughs> I would advise against, sir, taking any. That means you have to pee. Um, okay. That's fine. Uh, do you have any amber? I would like to unlock extra points. My good fellow, would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately, I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. Well, semi-precious. I'm I'm not going to steal from him. I'm starting to feel bad. Um, do you have any... Which ones are these? This is Amber. This must be Golden Elixir. This is Devil's Thorn. It... I don't know which one's the caramelite water. Let's see if he has any. caramelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. Okay. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm pushing this guy so hard. Listen, 
I suffer from terrible migraines, and the voyage by boat is brought on my rheumatism. So, unless you have anything else to alleviate the pain, please give me some quickly. Thank you. Oh, and, and the one from Bordeaux, right? I prefer it to the one from Paris. Immediately, sir. Here. I hope, sir, we'll get well again quickly. Nice. Anything else, sir? No, now I'm gonna leave you alone. Seriously, dude. Thank you for your help. Wow. I feel bad at the end of that conversation. <laughs> wow. I am generally a fairly easygoing person. And that was oddly uncomfortable to do. Well, I can have a nice seat. Very impressive. I mean, it was impressive last night, and it's still impressive today. So, yep. Very cool. Well. Alright. Now that I've finished, like, harassing the staff. So, is this the right door? I guess it's in my map. Hold on. Yep, there's the small salon. And then these lead through... I would really like to go see the gallery. But it looks like I, sh I should probably come... Say hello to everybody. Good day. Impressive. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet. Allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Interesting. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? It is odd. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted to hear you. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Um, and surprisingly, you know, Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason, and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. Interesting. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. <laughs> oh, I understand. I should feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your <laughs> offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Wow. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I don't get it. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. Well, he's not here. I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule, but I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. That's the not necessarily true, of, of the course. The were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms well, nice have you. all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. <laughs> Interesting. Um, psychology. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. Just mentioning that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. 
Interesting. Okay. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. Um... I've already talked to you. What do you think of Ulnar before I just jump right into speaking with him? What do you think of Ulnar? The Prussian king is his puppet. Hmm. I find it hard to believe the king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. Oh? I see. I don't, actually. My friend. Have you any information on this Napoleon? Um, I don't know what I have. If I do, I'll tell you. Lord Mortimer has invited Napoleon along to negotiate an important commercial venture. Nothing strange about that. And the Golden Order is somehow involved. What? Our order? Are you sure? That's what I read in the letter from Mortimer to Napoleon. Oh, dude. Keep that to yourself. This information is important. Thank you, Louis. Oh, did you see the butterfly in the background? It would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Certainly. Wow. Ah, I like the lack of railing. Nice. Living on the edge, if you will. And you shouldn't. Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Um. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. Ah. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my allies. Okay. Of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannon. Um... Let's... Okay, I don't know how much that is, so sure. Absolutely. 50,000 Louis d'or and hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 Louis d'or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. No, I don't. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. All right. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster? Oh, shit. Um, France needs a leader. I think that's right. I think what France is lacking today is a truly strong leader ready to govern her. Someone who will restore her luster, who will propel her forward so once again she becomes a proud nation respected by all. A man capable of both rebuilding the country from the inside and, at the same time, developing exterior relations. Someone with a vision, I think. The right person still remains to be found. You're right, my friend. I yes. hear your words Whew. and I agree. Monsieur de Richie. I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Huh. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little Ooh. gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Nice. Mr. Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. Excellent. Very good. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. Marriage. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, 
for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the Presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. All right. Well said. I well said. You shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right. We shall meet again tomorrow. Ah. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Look at all the butterflies. That was very interesting. Okay, so I found the book. Yep, I got access to the message. We persuaded Elizabeth to talk to us. We gave her back her talisman. We did meet the guests. We proved to Napoleon that I'm awesome. We searched a room and we searched Napoleon's room. Oh, I took all possible paths. Cool. I feel like I rocked that one. I mean, I kind of blew it with Elizabeth. Oh, wow, we have eight points now. <laughs> okay. So these ones, so these require three points to level one. These require, wow, these are all very different. Okay. So, what would be good to know? So we already have science level one. It would be nice to have occult level one. We already have a level in manipulation, and that's been going well. Subterfuge, ooh, tempting. Erudition, right? I didn't actually look at these very carefully, so I'm kind of glancing through them here. Diversion, yeah. Politics, that could be valuable here. See, I'm feeling that if I'm going to go kind of manipulation, that etiquette would be another very valuable skill to have in conjunction with that. But I don't know if that would give me a lot of overlapping abilities. Uh, questioning, vigilance, yep. Psychology, oh, that takes a lot of points. Uh, logic and agility. Oh, do I spend two points on that? So, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to unlock a level of etiquette. Okay. And I am going to... So, we have seen a lot of nutball occult stuff going on. So I think this will be worth putting a point into. That'll give us up to level two. So that's nice. I would like to... So I'm being sneaky, so should I go ahead and grab subterfuge or agility? I think we're going to go sneaky. Yep. And we still have enough points to continue to be sneaky. I like that. I think that's good. I hope I'm not screwing this up, but I think I like it. Let's do that. All right, let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Okay, so now we get to pick some manuscripts. So, this one we don't know enough about yet. This we don't know enough about yet. So, this would give us a skill point in etiquette. This would give us another skill point in etiquette. Let's see, psychology tempting. A skill point in politics. We're kind of going with that. So this would be, this would get us to level two in conviction, because I already have two points in it. And another skill point in manipulation. I think it would make sense to take the skill point in conviction. Because that will, well, I don't know. Does it really make any difference? We already kind of blew it with psychology. I'm pretty bad at that. So, 
Um, I rather enjoyed Machiavelli, so let's do that. All right, and on that note, it is time for us to go ahead and take a break. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.